Father, we thank you in Jesus' precious name, by his precious blood, that we're able to be here today. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would uh, speak through us, uh, uh, to speak to us about us and everything we need to know to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord, Father. We just love you and praise you and thank you for this time together, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Amen. Um, as I've shared with you before, I believe that the great evil in the church today, quote, the Protestant church all around the world, is what's been done with the roles of men and women in the church. I believe women pastors, women in the office of pastor is evil. I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit is grieved by all of this. I believe that the reason the church does not have the anointing and the power to deal with the sodomite community in America is because the, the women, the spirit of the females being in the church, running the church. Uh, the church is out of order, therefore uh, uh, everything it does is out of order. We're told in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that everything is to be done in decent and in order. And the most messed up out of order thing in the church is number one, the role of women, and then number two, uh, which is not so much being out of order, they're just not accepting it, is the d denial of the spiritual gifts that the Bible tells us that each Christian, that God gives each Christian a gift as he chooses to minister to the body of Christ. So in the Protestant denominations, you have uh, uh, Charismatics, Pentecostals, uh, all the churches that believe that you can have women pastors, that's evil. All the churches that believe that, that believe that God does not operate in the gifts anymore, He does not give His His children, the people who are saved, gifts to minister to the body of Christ. Those things are not in effect like they were in the uh, apostles' times. That is evil too. So I'm going to try to come uh, specifically from the role of the women in the church to get, give you understanding, uh, which will also bleed over into the uh, the issues of the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, the first place that I I, I, uh, I, I listened to a guy uh, last night, a Ph.D., uh, teach on this subject of, of the roles of women in the church, what they can or cannot do. And uh, uh, he's a younger man than I. I've been doing this now about 40 years. I've been saved about 50, and I had a good pastor uh, that I was saved under that, that, that taught the truth about this matter. So... Uh, um, this is, a, this is a calling in my life. This is part of the calling that God has given me uh, to do what I do in the body of Christ, to minister about this issue. This is one of the issues. Um, but I watched him and I listened to him last night, a PhD, a guy from Israel, in a Messianic congregation in Israel. And it was, if I, if I was a woman and I'd heard the message, if I wasn't mad, I'd have felt empty. I just felt empty. It's it, you know you tell children why they can't. You, you, you tell them they can't, but a lot of times you don't explain why they can't because it's just not for a child to know. They wouldn't understand if you told them in the first place. But as we get older and we become adults, if you're going to take the word of God, you're going to say this, this, and that, or you can or you can't. There needs to be a biblical understanding, an explanation of why. Because if something that's being said is correct, whether you like it or not, it's in the Bible, but then you're given understanding and explanation of it, if you really are his child, you recognize and realize this is going to be good for you. Your eyes are open to light. You understand, oh, now I get it. Now, okay, Lord, okay, okay. Because none of us are perfect with Jesus, but we walk in the amount of light that we have. But if we really have the light, we want we want to get more light. We're, that's why we come to church and we write all these notes down and we do all these things. Uh, most people who take time to really listen good or, or, or write to what they're, they, they want the truth. And uh, it is a complex situation because the two most complex things God ever put on earth was a man and a woman. That's the bottom line. Of everything that you look at in this life, the most complex things are a man and a woman. So, um, um, so what we're going to do... Uh, and we're, we're going to uh, 
uh, deal with this in the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to start off by saying the, the key with the issue in the church, why women fight this, is because most of the time it's taught carnally. There's no revelation to it. It just, you read the New Testament like the law. Accept it, go on, and, and there's no answering of questions really given uh, an understanding of, of, of this is why this is this way. And that's why I say, if I'd have been a woman listening to that, because I was a pastor and a man listening to this, and I understood what he said, and he didn't really say anything wrong, except he didn't say enough because he wasn't uh, deep enough in the subject. He didn't have enough revelation from the Lord to realize uh, about the positive confession. The truth will minister life to the hearer, okay? So if the truth you're telling is not minister life to the hearer, it doesn't mean that you're lying, but that you're either carnal, you're shallow, that you're not listening to the Lord the way you need to be listening to the Lord. Now, if I was going to give a title to this, if I, if I was going to explain where we're going to go on this, is that take the passage where the Bible tells us that, that the, the woman is to, is to submit to the husband. That the woman in 1 Timothy chapter 2, she, she's to be quiet. She's uh, not to speak. Uh, she's uh, to submit herself. Uh, but in that passage, it also goes over in 1 Timothy chapter 2 about the way a woman should dress. And this is where it got real, really weak, really weak last night. The pastor could not explain, I mean, it seems like common sense, why a woman should dress appropriately coming to the church. But the way this is taught, it makes the woman go away feeling like a devil or dirty by the time they explain about a woman covering herself, her hair, the braids, what she should wear. They come away feeling rejected and dirty and there's something wrong with them. When it's just absolutely the opposite of that. The scripture tells us that no flesh will glory before God. Okay? Yeah. The Bible tells us that our God is a jealous God. The Bible tells us about a husband in, in Proverbs, a jealous husband. You better look out for a jealous, jealous husband because he'll do something bad to you. He'll do something bad to you. Okay? But the Bible says our God is a jealous God. And you can believe any jealousy our God has is holy and righteous. Okay? Now, the Bible does say, relating to the husband in that area, it says that if, 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 if about committing adultery and taking another man's wife, it says, uh, man, can you take fire in your bosom and live? And what that talking about is talking about in that wife that you commit adultery with, the jealousy and the fire of that man burns in the bosom of that woman and that man that's committing adultery with that wife he is harming his own self there are principalities and powers from that man being that woman being one with that husband when you get in the middle of that you have opened yourself up to every demon possibly you can think of but that jealousy is coming against you. It's a principality and power that will mess you up and without deliverance from God and understanding of what's happening, you're, that thing will be stalking you the rest of the days of your life. The Bible tells us that, that God came not to destroy man, but to save him and deliver him that he desires for no man to perish. So there's deliverance for all of these sins that we've committed, all these wrongs that we've done through the precious blood of Jesus, but we have to get that forgiveness. We have to confess and get that forgiveness in the body of Christ. And then a person who's lost to be able to come under the blood and be forgiven of all their sins and all these uh, curses and torments to get off of them, they have to come under the blood of Christ and receive the truth and walk in that, and that cleanses away all the sins. Got it? Yeah. Now, it tells us, I was talking in 1 Timothy chapter 2 about the way the woman dresses, that 
and this is the way it's taught, that the woman should dress real modestly, that, that not to distract men in the fellowship. And that is true. Okay? But it's taught in such a way, it, it comes off like that's how that's what the woman wants to come in church to that's what the woman wants to come into church and do anyway. Is this she's she's hunting just like men hunt. Flesh, sex, okay? But Paul's talking to the body of Christ, he talked to the Christian woman. And and and, and, and Paul explains the what the way it, it is explained is that look when God made Adam he looked and there was not an appropriate friend or mate or person for Adam so it's obvious God loved Adam he put Adam to sleep and took a rib out of him he did not just make him a wife he made him something perfect absolutely perfect for him something wonderful for him well the scripture tells us if a, if, if a child asks for a, uh, a fish will you give him a serpent if he asks for uh, something you're going to give him something just the opposite won't help him in any way you're going to be a mean father or mother to your child no 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 and Jesus the, talks about it. Look, you got to understand when God made woman for man, it was perfect. She was perfect. He was perfect. There was no sin in the world. He, she was absolutely what he needed. Absolutely. And. We know that women, all women know this. And men with any sense finally understand it. Once who really get it in there, get it in there, get it in there, get it in it. Oh, no wonder I'm so stupid. No wonder my life's so messed up. Women know, scientists know, doctors know that women, men are visual creatures. They are visual creatures. What they see with their eyes as far as females. In a sense, the way a male dog treats a female dog, even when she's not in heat, she's in heat, he will give preference to her over male dogs. And, you know, but when she comes in heat, he. he even more so, he can't help himself. In the natural realm with man and woman, when God made woman, woman man was made, with what, what God gave him, that woman, it was meant for him to be attracted to her with his eyesight. What he sees about his wife, his woman, pleasant to look at. Now, this is just my thought, but they say you marry a woman like your mother. Uh, that could be so, and it might not be so, but I would say this, if, that, if, if any of that is true, that it would have something to do with the sight. And probably more. Yeah. No, I can't explain all that. But, and my point I'm making out of that is, is that everybody thinks who they get married to, they got the wrong person. <laughs> no, God cares about people who aren't saved too. Yeah. God has a plan for the whole world. So even the lost person, that natural instinct in that male to go by, it's, it's his sight, he sees a female, some females turn him on more or 
get him looking more than others something about them. And I'd say it's part of the mystique or the female thing about females, the way they are, they're all different. It's like a snowflake. No, uh, no snowflake is the same. No fingerprint is the same. But something embedded in the man, his attention toward that woman. Um, it could be a shape of their head. It could be the shape of their legs. It could be the shape of their face. I don't, but I, I'm talking about even before you come to Jesus Christ. I'm talking, I'm, before you get to Holy Ghost, I'm talking about natural law that they talk about. That, that, that God has made this thing perfect. People who think that, hey, I didn't marry the right person. And I had all these kids and, and this and that. No, no, no. No, that's not so. God knew what was going to happen before it happened, and He knew who you were going to marry and who you were going to be with. The Bible said that children are the offspring of the Lord. They are a they are the gift of the Lord. Yeah. Okay? Children. Okay? Yeah. But where I'm going with this is, is that when the Bible, when God gave the woman to man, He gave the woman to man to be his cover, his coat, his garment, to co cover him, to encompass him. That's why the Bible tells us that we are not to do damage to our wife, to our garment. She's called the garment in the New Testament and the Old. Don't you know? Don't don't mess up your coat, your jacket, that thing you wear. You know, I tell, uh, uh, and I'm trying to be led by the Holy Ghost. In this I've, I've often seen, you know, just uh, I have to thank God. I was really blessed with my mother. Most guys that grew up with me probably thought I was cursed because my mother spent a lot of time whooping on me <laughs> to get stupid stuff out of me. But I'm so grateful yeah. and thankful today what it brought into my life and especially when I look at the other guys their mothers never whipped them and they went off the deep end and they're still going yeah. off the deep end today yeah. okay mm -hmm. help me with this Lord so the woman which is the man's covering as Malachi says no man who has ever had a remnant of the spirit a uh, snitching and ever done harm divorced his wife done harm to his garment because he realizes that's me that's me and then back, back okay but going back well you know i've been a pastor 40 years now i've been a christian 50 but you know we we, we grow we we learn we go through stages we get older we start to have understanding uh but seeing guys driving down the street in their car, teenage, 28 year old boys, some 30s and older, they're driving down the street in their fine car, their restored automobile, their brand new car they paid a lot of money, and you can see them driving them down the street, they're really proud of their car, but over there against the door is the little woman kind of sagging down because she knows that he's more proud of his car than her but he's the one she's the one he goes lays with she covers him and takes care of him but he makes his love to his car mm -hmm. one of the things that the Lord laid on me a long time ago was just that um, as far as jewelry and tattoos your wife is your jewelry she is your tattoo. That's what you wear. Now here's where I want to go with, with, with this. When God tells the woman, be silent in the church, that she's not to usurp, to teach men in the assembly, she's to be quiet. It is because of her innate beauty that God gave her when he created her for the man that she was created for. That he gave the woman to the man for almost all week. Six days out of the week. 
And they, that's why they say, honey dudes. Yeah, I hope to make a grown woman cry. I hope to make them weep over here in this. It's supposed to. It's holy. And God is saying, look, woman, I made you the apple of his eye, but he's the apple of my eye. And I give him to you all week. You sleep with him. You love with him. You cry with him. All week long, you got him. But when he comes in here on Sunday or Saturday morning, I don't want his eyes on you anymore. Because I am God. I am the one that teaches him. And then he teaches you. And when he says that, that he's a jealous God and that no flesh will glory in his presence, the woman having the man's attention on her when she goes in the church is causing for men to glory in her. That's why God tells her in Timothy and other passages, tap it down. I don't want them seeing your flesh. I don't want them being interested, focused on you. I want them focused on me, their God, our God, so I can give them the Word of God. It's not because she's dirty. Everybody's dirty. they got to get saved. But the point in the natural, the natural law is not. Those things are not told because she's unclean and dirty and not worthy. No! I made you for him to look at all the time. For your sight to be pleasant in him all the time. And then woman, you must understand, if, if you want him looking at you in church, you got all them other women in church. And what about the ones who aren't dressing right? You want your husband look at them other women instead of coming here and looking at me and listening to me? So it has nothing to do with a woman being less. It has to do with her role and what she feels. God loved Adam so much, he said, i got to make a woman to take care of this guy six days a week. Six and a half days a week. He needs somebody to take care of him. Somebody to minister to him. But when he comes in here, I want both of you ministering to me and me ministering to you. And your beauty and your looks in the flesh have to take a back seat to my spirit. For the Bible says that no, without holiness no man will see God. None. Okay? Okay. Now that that's the crust of where we're going in all of this that the reason God's given the woman the instruction in the church that she's gotten is her beauty, her beauty has to take a back seat to God's spirit do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Okay. now God can't take her beauty away because that beauty was made for the man that they could be one on earth in the flesh to enjoy all that envelops, including a child, everything that goes with it, from the young years to the old age, old age, to even as the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I am in Him, He is in me, you are in me, and we are one, okay? It's, 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 it's a relationship. Okay, so so now that I've said that, let's talk, let's talk about the man, the villainized man in the Bible, that the church in America, 90% of the churches in America, have made a homosexual because he was never married a male chauvinist pig because he tells women that they should be silent in the church and submit uh, uh, 
if, if you read the New Testament, over and over, Paul is beat and stoned and left for dead, treated bad. But I can tell you, he's treated worse today than he was ever treated back then. And it's the church in America specifically that is doing and slandering him and destroying his reputation not only in the church but before a lost world. So I want to look at some passages about who this Paul the Apostle is. Where did he get the right to say these things that, that he says about woman's place? And the first place I want you to look, let's look, look, look at Acts 19.15. Acts 19.15. Let's look at verse 11. Let's start in verse 11. Acts 19, 11. Check with your neighbor. Make sure they have it. Verse 11. 19, 11. And God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempting to name over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And seven sons of one Sceva, a Jewish high priest, were doing this. And the evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus. Now, you remember that word, recognize. These demons said, I recognize Jesus, and I know about Paul. Uh, but who are you? See, that, that, that translation is not correct, I know about Paul. Because in the original, it's going to say that I recognize Paul too. I, I know who Paul is, okay? Now, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known to all, both Jews and Greeks, both Jews and Greeks, who lived in Ephesus, and fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was being manifested. Many also of those who had believed kept coming, confessing and disclosing their practices. That is a fruit of really believing in Jesus. Telling on yourself about your wrongdoing, giving it up before others and confessing your wrongs. Saying, uh, uh, forgive me, pray for me to do what is... You know, that, 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 they saw this demon beat these people to hell and it put the fear of God in them. They, they, they confessed, they told what they were hiding, the games they were playing. Okay, and it says the fear of the Lord fell upon them. Now watch this. And many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of all, and they counted up the pieces of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord was growing mightily, mightily and prevailing. Now, here's the point I want to make. Demons, in the same sentence, said to these fake preachers, We know who and acknowledge who Jesus is. And we know who and acknowledge who Paul is. But who are you? And because these men did not acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior, because they did not acknowledge Paul as the one that God sent to start the Gentile church, They weren't covered by any of the blood of Jesus or the power of God. They were wide open to demons and devils because they did not believe in Jesus or Paul or believe what they came for and what they were sent to do and what they did. So those demons beat the hell out of them. And these other people were scared the hell out of them too. I mean scared the hell out of them. Some, some of these people, now watch this. There were Jews and Christians there that said they believed in, Jews and Greeks that said they believed in Jesus. And even follow Paul's teaching, what Paul taught. 
But boy, when they heard that demon speak out of that man, I know who Paul, what Jesus is. I know who Paul is. But who are you? And then beat the hell out of them, all seven men. One man beat the hell out of these people. Them other Christians, and those that were not Christians, who were playing Christian, had, who had been hiding their secret sins in the drawer <laughs> and in their glove compartment, playing games, they thought, oh, oh, wait, 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 let me get rid of it. Oh, no, I, I repent, look, and, and it said, it said that, they said all these people went and got their books of witchcraft, their black magic and stuff, and brought it to the center of town to burn that stuff because they realized that those sorcerers, those Jewish mystics, whatever they were, liars, playing games with the name of Jesus, that they didn't have no power against the Holy Ghost of God. That the Holy Ghost, Jesus, God, trumped and destroyed all witchcraft and sorcery. And they thought, why am I holding on to this witchcraft and sorcery and holding on to Jesus too? Because what's going to happen to me is I'm going to be just like these old boys that's supposed to be Jesus by preachers using Jesus' name or saying they know about Paul, and I'm going to get the hell beat out of me because I don't have the real thing. So that's the first thing we see about the Apostle Paul. The one everybody in the church, the, the churches that teach women pastors, they hate the Apostle Paul. They will not tell you that. Many of them will tell you that he's a bigot, he was out of his time, he didn't know, things have changed. Some of them are just violently in your face hating Paul. Well, I can tell you right now just by what you just saw. What do you think's coming your way one day? What do you think's coming the way of these people, these pastors and these people and these women who are running down, slandering, and lying against the Apostle Paul now? Someday, payday. It's coming. It's sure coming. Let alone, we don't even have to go into about Jesus, do we? Okay? Okay? So what we see is even the demons acknowledge Paul. And we go to church and we won't acknowledge what he says? Now let me tie a scripture together here for you real good in Paul's teaching that will go right with this, okay? Let's look at 1 Corinthians. Chapter 14. In this particular passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul is telling the women to be silent in the church. He's talking to them about how tongues should be used in the church, one of the spiritual gifts. Okay? And then he says in verse 36, Was it from you that the word of God first went forth? Or has it come to you only? Now what Paul is saying here to the church, what he's saying to these people in the church that he's writing to, did you give the word of God to man or did God give it? Were you sent to give the word of God to man or was I sent or the people that he sent from the beginning with Moses on up through now the New Testament church? Church people, y'all here in the church, was the word of God here before you? Did it come from you? No, it didn't. It was already here. Okay? He's saying this. He's explaining where the word of God came from and it didn't come from you. Okay? It didn't come from man. And then look what he says. Look what he says. Or has it come to you only? 
In other words, he's saying with this point is that you can say whatever you think the Word of God says, but since it didn't come from you, you're not the only one who has it. And other people know what it says too. So if somebody comes to you and points at the Word and says it says this and it don't say that, well, the fact that the Word of God was before them, it didn't come from them, but it came from God, that trumps whatever they say or whatever they believe. Understand? Amen. Now watch what he says right after that. If anyone thinks he is a prophet, we ought to understand that real, real good. What we've been going through for 20 or Golly, nearly 40 years with our presidents now. People <laughs> prophesying who's going to be the president, who's not going to be the president, what's going to happen. And especially what we just went through with President Trump and going on with President Biden right now. Everybody's saying God told me this and God told me that. First of all, the reason Paul says, if anyone thinks he's a prophet. Paul is saying there's prophets. There are prophets. Yes. That's part of his teaching. The different gifts in the church along with the fruit in the church. He says, if any of you think you are a prophet, but now Paul, the one that God sent to start the Gentile church, but also the one the demon said, we know Jesus and we know Paul. Paul says right here, if anyone thinks he is a prophet or spiritual, now let me ask you a question. He just made the statement. You're either a spiritual person or you're not. Before we get saved, we don't have the Holy Ghost. We walk through the door without the Holy Ghost. But once we get saved, it's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. And the life that we now live, we live it in the faith of the Son of God who died and gave himself for us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Paul says right here, now if anybody here thinks they're a prophet, or you think you're spiritual, you've got the Holy Ghost in you. Please listen to this. Let him recognize, there's that word recognize. Hmm. Remember what the demon said? To the seven sons of Stephen, the liars that using the name of Jesus that Paul preaches, they said, we recognize Jesus. We recognize Paul, but who are you? And then we go down the road here and Paul is teaching and he's talking to church people. If you think you're a prophet or spiritual, let him recognize that the things which I write to you are the Lord's commandment. He says, if you're a true prophet, you really know the Lord. If you're spiritual, you got the Holy Ghost. Acknowledge, admit, confess that Paul, what you write are the commandments of God. God told you to say it. Got it? Because yeah. somebody has to bring the message. The Old Testament was the message the Jews brought from Moses. The New Testament is the message that Jesus brought through the apostles that went to the Jews and then Paul who was sent to the Gentiles that was in agreement with the apostles that he preached the gospel. Got it? Okay, so as we go into this, remember these verses we're going to go over are written by the man we are talking about, the Apostle Paul. So before you hear people talking about Paul being a bigot, a woman hater, a sodomite, that's for another time, I think you need to think about what happened to them seven men that the demons in that one man beat the hell out of them and ran them out of the building. And it was so bad that people went and repented of their sins and went home and found all their books on witchcraft and threw it out the window. And took it, took it to the city uh, square and burned it because they realized witchcraft has no power against the Holy Ghost except what you did. Give it, got it? Amen. 
Okay. You want the witchcraft to have some power over you? Then you give them the scriptures that God put in the Bible uh, where you don't have them to arm yourself with, and witchcraft will have power over you. Put on the whole armor of God, all the word of God, everything is breathed. Don't take away from it, and don't add anything to it. This is the man the church in America hates today, the majority of it, the Apostle Paul. Now, remember I start this with everything told the woman about how she should dress, submit in the church, and the things she should do, and that she should not teach men in the assembly. She can teach children and other women, and she can teach young men until they get to a certain age, probably right after when they come in to puberty, when, they, when boys, they, they need to be given to men to be taught, okay? Was, it's because woman is a beauty she was meant to be a beauty she was given to man to look at pleasant to his eyes to make him want to go out and work and bring her money yeah. to be satisfied with her her breast her as a blessing from God I know you're going to work hard every day old man I know you're going to have a lot of battles in this life and you might have to go to war, but whatever you got to go through, whatever you got to do, you to protect your family. But this woman that I'm giving you, she's going to help you with all of that. She is going to be a blessing, a bomb, a pleasure to you, something ple pleasant for you to look at. She is a lovely. And I can't have you looking at her and focused on her in the church house because I am God and I'm a jealous God so she needs to take a back seat and let you look at me for a while instead of all your focus being on her hello yes. it's nothing against her yeah. It's for her. I guess God could have made her so ugly nobody would want to look at her. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> but that wouldn't have been God. He loved them. Yeah. No Christmas gift has ever been made. Nothing has ever been made with the glory of the woman mm -hmm. that God gave to man. That's why about her hair. It says her hair is given to her as a glory, a covering. That's why these you see in these churches where these women that have, have pulled their hair back, covered their hair, done something with their hair because they realize the shining glory, the attention men to that hair. Uh, even in, 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 in the Orthodox, the Jewish church, and, and, and more than just the Orthodox, those women had understanding. They, they got wigs at home. The only time anybody sees their hair is at home with their husband because that's their glory and that's his glory, got it? So these women would go into the synagogue and stuff and they would cover their beautiful hair with these wigs so men knew they were looking at, looking at wigs they weren't looking at the real thing. So again, as we go into this, this is not against women. Man gets his life from woman and then gives it back again. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here we go. He says in verse 38, verse 37, you must recognize that what I write to you is the command of the Lord. Does that not sound like Moses? Yeah. It absolutely sounds like Moses, don't it? Yeah. And everybody that knows their Bible that's been saved knows that the Apostle Paul was a stickler. He, you were not going to tell him that people were saved by the law. You were not going to tell him that the church was under the law. You were not going to tell him that. Because mm. it's not. We're saved by grace through faith. 
And that produces the fruit. Christ is in us. He's doing this in us. That makes us feel better and come through that door different. Something's happening inside of us. It's not just out there anymore where we're looking. It's, it's something. We become pregnant with the Holy Ghost inside of us. And we got that. It bears witness. We're not alone. We're not alone as we go and walk about where we go. But he says, But if anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. Paul the Apostle just said, If you do not recognize what I've written, you're not recognized by God. Prove it, Pastor David. We just did in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Those seven Jewish, and they could be Christian warlocks, witches. They go to church. They go to synagogue. They claim to love God. They don't love God. They're just full of control, sorcery, manipulation, and game plan. They did not recognize Jesus as Lord. They did not recognize Paul as the sent one from Jesus. That Jesus met him on the road to Damascus and had a job for him to do. But they were going to use their names. They were going to use their names. But they didn't acknowledge their role, their calling, who they were. What was that? They, they, they didn't intimately know them. They didn't believe. And so therefore when the demons came out, to beat the hell out of them, God didn't stop it. God didn't stop it. God let those demons beat the hell out of them men because they tried to use Jesus' name and God said, you don't know Jesus. Try to use Paul's name. You don't know Paul. You don't acknowledge them. And God said, I don't acknowledge you. So you're out there on your own fighting all the devils and demons, using all your religious talk and doing all your stuff, whatever you're saying, but because you don't acknowledge the men that I sent to do the jobs and the roles that they did, Jesus, God in the flesh, and Paul the apostle that he sent to start the Gentile church, God says, I don't acknowledge you. That's pretty frightening, ain't it? Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of battles and tough stuff in this life. You get out there on the street, you go to day-to-day -day life, and there's stuff. Dear Jesus, how am I going to get through this? Oh, how, how's it, you know? And you have your faith in Christ. Okay, Lord, I don't see how, but I believe, Lord, you'll bring me through this. Okay? And he does. Over and over. But if you were trying to call on the name of Jesus and your faith was not in him, it wouldn't do you any good because you're not one of his. We have just barely begun to touch the glory that a woman is. The older I get, the more stupid I know that I have been. Have an understanding about womanhood. From little girls up to grandmas. They are special. It's a holy thing that God did. But it has to be used properly according to the way that God meant it to be used in the role that it plays. Now watch this. In America, spread it to the world. Gender confusion. Everybody claiming to be another sex or not knowing what sex they are, even though they can look at their sex organ and say, I don't know if that's what I really am. The church has opened the door up to this with the Pentecostal movement that has spread to the whole world since 1900. Every Pentecostal church that teaches women can be in the office of a pastor. That's an evil and it's a lie against the truth. 
and we are in a place now a hundred or more years since the Azusa Street Revival that the world is almost ate up in the teaching rejecting the teachings of the Apostle Paul about woman's role the church is ate up with this to the point that they have no power against the sodomite community in the world in America against all these unclean spirits across the board there's no power in the church to confront these demons like the demons confronted the seven sons of Sceva. Do you understand? Yes. The spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel, that's where the Bible says, it, it, one of the people that it names that's, that's going to be in hell is an in feminine man. Now, in that same passage, it talks about homosexuals and sodomites, but it names him in feminine man. It doesn't mean that that man is a sodomite, a homosexual. It means he thinks like a female, like a woman. He does not understand and receive the role of a male and carry himself like a male. He doesn't think like a male. He thinks like mama's boy. He thinks like a, a woman. He doesn't have that manly thinking, okay? That's what, you, that's what we have in the church in America today with men who their common sense ought to tell them because Romans chapter 1 tells us that the things that can be known about God is, is known to them because God has put it in them. But they've rejected it. That man in his nature and being knows that he should be the head and the leader. He should protect. He should provide. Uh, that he should have that whole manly thinking like a father, a protector, okay? When you pray, pray, our Father in heaven. Soon they're going to relieve that. They're going to get rid of that because all the people from the Pentecostal movement and all the people that's tied in the world together, they're all merging together now. That's a, that's a racist word. You can't say father because there's no sex for anybody anywhere. And it's, it's going there. It is going there. That's exactly where it's going. And God is going to be turned into a woman. And as a matter of fact, if you want to know some. Uh, it, read the book of Jeremiah. There's other passive books that it's in. But the reason the straw that broke the camel's back when God destroyed Judah and she went into captivity, they were worshiping a female God that was known as the God of the holes, the, the, God, the, the Lord of the holes. That man had become a beast. The Bible says that men without God are like brute beasts. And a wicked woman knows that if it, it, uh, that she can rule a wicked man by pleasure and in some cases food. Because rather than men being lovers of God, they're lovers of pleasure. Read the book of Jeremiah. Read the book of Jeremiah. And when God confronted them, about them worshiping the queen of heaven. It said the children were cutting the wood, getting the wood to make the sacrifice to the queen of heaven. And the woman was going to bake cakes to the queen of heaven. And then the woman cried out to the prophet and to God, wait, 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 wait. Our husbands watched us do this. Call on a female God. Now there's some other areas that I want to go into on this that we will go into next Sunday with specific verses about all these issues about the roles in the church. How you should act in those roles. Confirmations from the other apostles confirming. But right now at this point it would be real good for me to uh, uh, explain this. One of the passages in the New Testament it tells us 
remember I was saying to you, Paul fought everybody that tried to put a Christian under the law. But, in 1 Corinthians 14, 34, let's read that. Let's look at 33. Let's look at 32. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Let the women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but let them submit themselves, just as the law also says. Well, if Paul, what is Paul doing saying as the law says here? Everybody that's been saved for any amount of time, well, maybe not so much more because it's not preached anymore. Women are the pastors. But anybody has been saved a number of years knows that what Paul is doing, he is referring to the natural law. He's referring to the law that... Adam was made first and then woman. And then he goes from there into the assembly about as the men and women said in the assembly. But the first thing he's doing, this, he said, because he, he says in the passage, he says in the passage, he says, he says that women are, are, to be, are not to use her authority and be over men, but to be silent in the church. They have any questions, ask it home. Because Adam was made first. And it was not Adam who was deceived, but it was the woman who was deceived. And that word deceived there is the word seduced. And here's the point that's being made. That, that woman, that glory, If she's not full of the Holy Spirit and obeying the truth, then that thing that God has been given as a blessing made for the man can be used against her. They say men, women Venus, men Mars, women think on this side, men think on that side, women think on both sides. God gave, made the woman, the man visual to look at her. But in the woman, she wants to be pursued. She wants to know that she is, that he wants her. He likes her. Okay? Yeah. That's where Satan, and, and, and uh, and it's a clean seduced. It's something between a man and a woman. A husband and a wife. Satan takes it. And uses it. To draw her in. To make wrong decisions. That word that she was quite deceived, that word there, deceived, is seduced. Wow. And it has to do with what God has put in woman to want to be pursued by her husband. And when that pursuing in marriage stops, the marriage dies. And there can be a thousand reasons for why the man doesn't pursue anymore. Most of the time because he's lost. And in the church it happens because he's backslidden. Or they're both backslidden. Now, what we're going to go over right now is that 
one of the on this passage where it says as the law says right here talking about 1 Corinthians 14 34 this has a direct tie with the name Zechariah the name Zechariah the book Zechariah it means God remembers Let me, let, me, let me read for you. The word Zechariah from Strong's Concordance 2148 through 3050. Jah Yahweh has remembered. Now, one of the things about a woman being pursued means just that. She wants to know if she has been remembered. And when a woman does not feel like she's been remembered, now we, we you know, we're, ta we're talking about something that when it was first put in, when God did it in the garden, making them lay with to complement each other perfectly. But, you know, again, we're talking about people who are not saved, don't have the knowledge of God, or rejected, and those in the church that do, and those, who are, and those in the church that are backslidden, or in churches where they're not being taught. Okay? A male, when pursuing a woman, remembers her. And that will upset her more than anything when she doesn't feel like she's being remembered. And again, talking about what we're, 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 we're talking about godly women with the spirit just like men he says if you think you're a prophet or spiritual acknowledge what i've said is from the lord a godly woman she she can she can deal with not being remembered she knows how to go pray about it got it <laughs> right okay how to get through to him god i, I can't get through to him you get through to him lord because he is the man i just can't treat him any way lord and and, and and the lord covered that too he told the woman he said if, if you're married to a man that won't listen if you're married to a man that's not a believer. He says, by your meek, gentle, quiet spirit, you'll win him to the Lord. Got it? Okay? So a, a born-again woman knows how to, she doesn't have to go cheat with another man, burn the house down or anything else. The very fact she can know this and walk in the spirit, she can respond in the spirit and get her prayers answered and get things worked out. Are we correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. So, Zachariah's name, the Lord has remembered. It also means to mark and burn incense. Incense. Burn incense. Earnestly be male. That the one who pursues the one who remembers that vehemency about him as God is a jealous God that husband has that vehemency and that jealousy of his wife a godly jealousy he remembers He burns with her in his heart. Mm. That's why it says, do not commit adultery and take that man's fire into your bosom. But it said, earnestly be male. That's it. Be, be male. That's what the world is lacking now in America especially. And that's why God put so much emphasis. Lord, you would send a man to hell who thinks like a woman? Yes. Because it's totally contrary 
to what I made him to be. It's ungodly. It's unrighteous. It's a mockery of God. He's not in the role that he's supposed to be. Now, here's, now here's the deal. Salvation can change all that. Salvation in Christ, the knowledge of Jesus can change all that, and it will. Okay? But we're talking about in the beginning when they were made, the way this is all set up, God. Okay? Now, when it says earnestly be male, it means most noteworthy sex. The male with God is the most noteworthy sex. What do you mean, Pastor David? God keeps notes on him. God made notes to him. This is talking about that God remembers his memorial record. The male is a memorial record. That God has made promises to the male through the fathers. This is another reason for the attack against manhood and male and, and, and just nearly destroying the church with this evil. Trying to wipe out any thought of father. Yahweh remembers manliness, godliness, maleness. <clears throat> that God made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he promised his seed would be blessed through all of eternity with these promises. And he made them to their fathers. And God told Solomon, Son, if I had not made promises to your father, that somebody would always sit on his throne because I loved him so dearly and he loved me, I would rip all the tribes, all the kingdom away from you, Solomon, but I'll leave you too. Because God keeps His promises. And you tell me the number one thing on a wife's chart, number one is that He keeps His promises to me. If you don't believe that, you have no idea what we're talking about this morning, correct? Correct. Right. But that's what you want with God. You want him to keep the promise he made of eternal security. To forgive you of your sins. To bless you coming in and going out. You want God to keep his promises. We are called the bride of Christ. There'll be no male and female in heaven. That's what that verse is talking about. There's no Jew or Gentile, male or female in heaven. We're all one in the spirit. We're all the bride of Christ. But on earth, they take that scripture and twist it in the Pentecostal church and say that's why you can have a woman pastor because there's no male or female. That's wicked, 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 wicked. A twisting of scripture. Now, um, in 2145, a male most noteworthy sex, memorial record, 3050, Yahweh, sacred name, Yah. The Lord most vehement. The man's fight. He's more vehement than the woman. Everybody knows you have to warm the woman up. Men don't need warming up. They need somebody to hit them with a stick <laughs> and run them back in the, in the, in the pen or something. But say it's that fire is what they are. And we're talking about this in the spiritual sense. Understand these things. Now, it's just a real quick story here. Zechariah was a priest. Zechariah is the one with Haggai who goes back to rebuild the temple. The second temple. Zechariah is also the name in the Greek of Zacharias in the Bible, the father of John the Baptist. Okay? The Old Testament promised that I will send a forerunner before the Messiah, before the Christ. 
And so when Zacharias and Elizabeth had John the Baptist, that was the fulfillment of a promise that came through. And the word Zechariah comes from the Arab, the Arabic word penis, zakar. And where people got off track with that is, they say, oh, you're talking about worshiping the phallics, worshiping the penis. They get into stuff like the Washington monuments and monuments all over the world, the, 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 the phallic symbol. And I was like, no, 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 no. What it meant was the promises are coming through the fathers down through the fathers. Got it? Through their seed. Got it? And God will keep those promises he made to those fathers. Got it? A, a woman loves a man that keeps his promises. But a woman really gets understanding, a Holy Ghost woman, that the promises he has and he's keeping comes from the Father above God Almighty. She's really got a joyful life. Even in bad times, she understands what she has to pray about, work with, and deal with this thing. Now, uh, a real quick story here. Okay, 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 now, now watch, now watch, now watch. Now remember, Zechariah means God, Yahweh has remembered. This is tied to the Lord's Supper. When the bread was broken, when the cup was drank, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Everything you do, do it, do it in remembrance of me. What I did, my body was broken, my blood was shed. I made you these promises. And I'm going to keep all these promises I've made you. And I'm coming back. I'm going to die, but I'm coming back from the dead. I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming. I'm from the I'm from the promise keeping only God. I am the Son of God. I am God in the flesh. And he tells him before he leaves us, he says, do this in remembrance of me. We have examples in the Old Testament of, of, of kings that were born to good kings of Judah. And some of them they didn't remember what their fathers did. And they did wickedly and stupid things. But there were a few kings that acted just like their father and did right and followed their father's pattern. We have that example in the book of Jeremiah where uh, uh, God tells Jeremiah to ask him, I don't remember his name at the moment, where is so-and-so at? Uh, uh, where, 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 go get the sons of so-and-so. The son. and, and so Jeremiah went and got these young men and brought them, they brought them into the temple, set them down in the place, and, and Jeremiah put some wine before them. To drink. And and Jeremiah told him to drink. And they said, We can't do that. Our father told us never to do that. And we always remember our father. Yeah. And these were not Jews. They came from a place. They looked for shelter and refuge and they came into the Jewish nation. But they would not go against their father's wishes. And God, Jeremiah told them, said, you tell them they're going to, I'm put a memorial up to them now and for everlasting. They'll always have a place before me because they honored what their father said. And that's what we're talking about today, about that husband, about that male. That role that they play is so very important. It's not more important than the woman. That's not the point. But it's the way it works and it's the role that it is. You also see in the Bible that nobody ever died and went to their mother's house. The house is in the Father. That's why we pray our Father who art in heaven. That's why when we go over to Isaiah, I believe chapter 4, it says that, 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 that God is going to have to, there's coming a time that seven women will take care of one man. Please take away our shame and our reproach. We didn't give us a name, give us a name. We didn't want a man. We didn't want a name. A man. We didn't want his name like they are today in America and all this feminism and all this mess. And God says there's coming a time that that I'm going to have to, I'm going to straighten this out when I wash away the filth of the daughters of Zion. The feminist. That not understanding that man was meant to be a blessing to you. The problem is you've been infected with this thing that, that men are no good. 
and that bench should serve you. And you don't reciprocate. You don't. You, you're just selfish. You're just selfish, self-centered women, complacent women, as the prophet says. You know, we also have the passage where the Lord says that that, that women who who live godly. Uh, Paul is talking about the woman's role in the church. It said that she will she will be saved through childbearing. What does that mean? God, said, God is saying, look, I have things to teach you that you would never imagine. That only an old woman with a bunch of kids and grandkids would understand. That when it came to the end of the road, and the last thing you could see were those kids and grandkids, would be a grateful and a thankful heart for the role that God gave you. The righteous women in the Bible used to say in the Old Testament, a man-child's been born. Represent a redeemer, a deliverer. With a promise. And a father that backs him. Now let me let me let me tell you a couple of quick stories here. Um a little boy who was named Zachariah. I know this for a fact. A little boy who was named Zachariah who at maybe five was taken away from his uh, his family. They moved and uh, grandma hadn't, hadn't seen him for a couple of years. And uh, at, the, at the time that she saw him uh, there were several children and they were all speaking to grandma but a, a wonderful sign of wonder is this little boy walked up to his grandmother and looked up at her and said, do you remember me? Just exactly what his name meant. And that, that was meant to be an encouragement to that grandmother. Understanding God's got this. He's working this all out. It's not been in vain what, what, what you've been going through. Now, I, I, this may be a little bit different, but I want to share this we talked about it in Sunday school is that in, in, in one situation in another family uh, uh, there was a, a mother uh, uh, standing in a, a checkout line at the grocery store and she had she had little ducklings that went went from her shoulders all the way down to her knees that little duckling just right there in the line at the, at the grocery store getting through there everybody was amazed these beautiful little children in the their heart and their little bit just there but anyway so they're, they're standing there in the, in, in the uh, say assembly line but the, the grocery checkout and you know they got these magazine racks the National Enquirer and this and that and all this stuff and, and smut and this little boy who was about four maybe he was five he saw a magazine with a woman with a seductive lustful look on her face and he hollered and grabbed his mother's leg and said, Mama, she wants to eat me. And any good godly woman knows exactly what that little boy's talking about. Because everybody, from uh, until you get born, till you get born again and all that stuff, you understand the desire and lust and everything else, just like everybody else, there's a difference. And when you come into Christ, you come into the love of God. Got it? But just little things, a child will lead them. Now, let's, let's go on with this. We're, we're about to cut this short and get the rest of this next week, okay? John remembers Yahweh. It's the, it's the self-existent, eternal Jehovah. It's the national name of God, Jehovah Lord. Only Emphatic, the Lord means to rule, to control, human or divine, Lord, Master, Adonai, powerful. My Lord, only males can be lords over something. Made them stewards of His authority, male. Because I guarantee you when a big bad army comes racing at you ladies, when aliens come in the, in the attack, you won't go looking for other ladies to protect you. And 
If you got any sense, you won't go looking for big bad men. You'll be looking for godly men. You'll be looking to go somewhere where there's some godly men to get you some help. Because they are the ones that God remembers because they remember God. They acknowledge God and they will be acknowledged by God as the Apostle Paul says. By acknowledging your husband, you get what God meant him to be. You find out what that is. You grow through that and in that. And it's that thing about being saved in childbirth. The wonderful things until the time the Lord gets ready to take you out of here. Get you to understand this is a lot more. This is so much more glorious than I ever thought. There's so much more to this than I ever thought. As the prophets used to lay on their beds as old men and bless their children. Now here's what I want to share with you and then we'll close. Zechariah 8.19 It speaks of these dates. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth, seventeenth of Tammuz, the fast of the fifth and ninth of Av, the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth months will become joy, gladness, and cheerful feast for the house of Judah, so love, truth, and peace. That verse in Zechariah If you glean it and study it in the Hebrew, the verse, the way we gleaned and studied Zechariah's name in Hebrew, you will find that that chapter and verse proves male priesthood on earth, even in the New Testament church, as far as being pastors, elders, and bishops, without a doubt. But only a person who is willing and go, could I have been wrong? Could I have been deceived by this feminine spirit that teaches that women can be everything men are? Only the person who says, well, if I have, I'm willing to look. Yeah. And that's what God talked about David, his heart. A man after my own heart, none of us have always been right. But did the word of God come to you first or come only to you? The truth is there for whoever wants to get it. I'm not going to go over how the Lord gave this to me right now. Because I want to give some people who are listening to this, wherever they may be listening at it from, to check out their own heart and be willing to go and glean this. This passage in Zechariah. Zechariah 8.19 and then go back to the uh, passages that we've gone over this morning in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And see if on their own they have a willing enough heart to pull something out that, wow, Lord, forgive me, Jesus. Because the ideal ideal is is to finish this race stronger than you started it. Amen. To be more on fire for Jesus when you leave here than when you started. And that's saying something. Instead of Jesus come and say, when I came, when I come, will I find faith on earth? David had that heart to repent. And God gave him great and mighty promises because he had that heart to repent. I said when he found out he was wrong, when he looked at it and said, I'm wrong, Lord, God said, you're a man after my own heart. You're a real man. 
And you were a man when you were a boy. You had faith in God. You went against that giant that them grown men wouldn't look at. So why would you suspect that a boy who would fight a giant with faith in God as he got older and made a mistake, why couldn't he face his own mistakes and look at it and get right with God and keep on that heart toward God, pure and trusting and loving God? Amen. Again, we're going to close this today. We'll continue this next week, Lord willing. That everything that the Apostle Paul says about a woman's place has nothing to do with being less. Amen. It has to do with not glorying before God or man. That the Lord wants men to have their eyes on Him when it's time and not on her because He made her a beauty and a glory. Can she not humble herself and she repent this morning and say, Lord, I'm so sorry of my selfishness, my arrogance, and just self-centeredness wanting everything to focus on me no matter where I go. But just like King David, as an adult he sinned terribly. But he repented because he was a real man of God. A real woman of God can listen to what's being said, go over this this morning, and go to God and say, well Lord, if there's something to this, show this to me. And she'll get it. She'll get it. And she'll be able to leave this life more on fire than when she started in Jesus. And she'll be able to lead more people to Christ. She'll have more power in the Holy Ghost in her life. More purity. The very thing that her heart desires in the first place. Uh, Pentecostal people have taken the scripture. Those who believe in women pastors. Not all Pentecostals believe in women pastors. But those who do believe in women pastors have taken the passage that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And they take that force and say what that means is if we're going to get anything, we got to take it. we got to charge Satan. we got to charge his walls. We, 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 we just got to take it. Just like Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Take it. Smash and grab. Take it. But that's not what that verse means. It's talking about people with the spirit just like what I just mentioned, Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Jesus said a man can receive nothing except the Lord give it to him. You don't have to take anything. You have to wait on God and love God and realize that man don't keep me from getting God's blessing. Nobody keeps me from getting God's blessing but me. God will make a way for me. I don't have to steal, take, burn, destroy, nothing. I just have to have a pure heart for God and know that he is my maker, yeah. my deliverer, my redeemer. And my future is in His hands. And can't nobody do nothing to me out there without Him allowing it. That I'm not held back in any way. My God's got me. And by me acknowledging that, I'm going to walk right into what God has for me and I don't have to take nothing from nobody. Down a word of prayer. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Lord, for your precious blood, for your precious Holy Spirit, for your precious Son. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for woman, our mothers, our wives, our friends that this life would not even be worth living without them, Lord. And Father, forgive us because of teachings that we've had to where, Father, we've come across that way and acted that way. That we were not able to really appreciate and enjoy what you have, have given because of, of men that did not hear what they needed to hear 
to be able to give a word, a word, Father, a, 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 an encouraging word, a, a word of, of, of excellent, of your great love, Jesus. Father, I pray for the people who are listening to this, that, Lord, it would, it, that, that the word that's been preached this morning would go forth. Father, it would, it would open the eyes of those who are willing to receive understanding, to be able to minister back to their wives and to their daughters and have understanding now to see where they've gone wrong and, 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 and have a way now to, to reach out in, in a love that will really touch and minister to, the, to, to these uh, women, Father, and to their daughters, Lord. We, we thank you for salvation. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all of these things. And we thank you that, 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 that you are in us, Father, that Christ is in us, the hope of glory. You are in us this day. And wherever we go, whatever we do, as we stay focused on that, Lord, that you're in us, that you loved us so much that you came to dwell in us, Lord, to be with us. And, Father, that's where we will find our peace, rising up or laying down, Lord, that you're in us. Thank you so much, Father, for being with us today. Holy Spirit, your presence here. And we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.